Good morning and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 8th of June 2020 and the time has just gone 11.09 British summer time. And it's been a fairly quiet start to the European session. It's a bit mixed. Um, uh, the FTSE 100 was above 6,500. Uh, we're just about, we just dipped back below that. Um, we're seeing small gains uh, on the DAX in Germany and the CAC 40. Sorry, apologies. We're seeing small losses rather uh, on the um, on the continental markets. Um, but I suppose low volatility and a bit of a lackluster session is probably the best way to characterise what we've seen in trading this week. Um, keep in mind, um, we had you know some small gains were registered in Asia overnight. But at the back end of last week, uh, the U.S. non-farm payrolls report was the kind of the talk of the town. Um, it had a well, very well-received number, and we saw decent moves to the upside in European as well as European stocks. <clears throat> so we had a bit of a so, so the carry-on for the Asian session was it was a bit slightly positive, and it's a bit mixed here in Europe today. Um, taking a look at what we what we saw out of the U.S. at the back end of last week, uh, going into the report. The headline non-farm payroll figure was tipped to show a decline of 8 million jobs in the month of May. In fact, it came in at an increase of 2.5 million. Now, keep in mind, the April figure um, was revised higher, so something somewhere in the region of 20.68 million people lost their jobs in April. So, obviously, the U.S. labor market is in a quite terrible state. It's it's nowhere near as strong as it was before the COVID-19 crisis. But the fact that um, two and a half million jobs were created in May. It's an indication that you know, you know what? Maybe the worst is over. This could be the turning point uh, for the um, for the U.S. economy and the kind of the wider kind of global economy. Because other economic indicators we've seen um, services figures, manufacturing figures that which came out in the past seven or eight days have all shown kind of signs that things are are still terrible for the month of May in terms of economic activity rates, but they're a lot better than what they were in April, which is, which is absolutely appalling. So this feeds into the wider narrative that economies, governments are loosening their lockdown restrictions and economies are opening up and things are getting better. Uh, hence why we saw, you know, you know, we, why we've seen um, multi-month gains in some European in European markets. For example, the FTSE 100, uh, we, 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 we've seen levels, multi-month gains being backed up on the, you know, in American indices and even some cases, looking at the NASDAQ 100, all-time highs have uh, been racked up. Uh, also, in the last, um, in the last say, 24 hours, 48 hours, we've had some trade figures out of China, and to be fair, they were fairly disappointing. Uh, imports were, uh, were fairly, there's a sharp decline in imports, and it came in worse than expected, uh, but China is a big importer of commodities, so it's quite possible that the kind of, the dollar amount that was spent in commo- on, the dollar amount that, um, that, that China imported in commodities was more down to the fact that commodity prices agriculture products, energies, metals, was actually weaker rather than actually pure demand. Uh, on top of that, uh, Chinese exports uh, declined in May by over, th- by over 3%, a decline of 3.3. Keep in mind in April, we saw an increase, of over, a surprise increase, which might be down to, to, the, um, to China selling medical equipment to the, basically the rest of the world. So d- demand around the world seems to be a bit weak, um, but on the, the flip side, Internal demand in China may not be as weak as the headline inflation, headline import figure would suggest. Uh, over the weekend, uh, OPEC Plus uh, agreed to, be, to ever so slightly tweak the historic or the extremely deep production cuts that they currently have in place. The current production um, guide, the current production agreement is, has seen 9.7 million barrels per day being taken off the market in terms of output. Um, that's and then going, that's in, you know, that was in May, it's also in June. When we get into July, that's going to change from a decline of 9.7 million to a decline of 9.6 million. So ever so slightly change, Mexico are opting out of it. Other members of the uh, OPEC plus agreement who are, who have committed to the 9.6 million barrels per day decline in output, they will they will have to comply with it, uh, and if they don't comply with it in July, they're going to have to kind of make up for it in August and September. So OPEC Plus are very serious about um, everyone uh, following the um, towing the line, as it were. In addition to that, uh, in the past, in the last couple of days, we heard from Saudi Arabia, who are increasing their selling prices, the, the rate at which the price at which they sell to others. 
the, the price at which they're selling to, uh, to Asia was the largest uh, increment uh, seen in at least 20 years. Setting prices to other countries, other areas around the world uh, has also increased. So with that, we've seen you know firmer oil prices, which I'll be covering uh, Brent crude later on in today's update. Uh, so let's have a look at what's going on in the markets. Take a look now. Um, we can see here at the foot 200, this is a very common theme, has been a nice upward trend for the last few months, a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. So we're in a solid upward trend. Should you continue to press or press on from here, we're currently just south of 6,500. If you continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking heading up towards this red line here, um, indicated in you know, the, the short to medium term, which is the 200 moving average, and that comes into play at 68.46. Uh, any moves to the downside might find some support from this yellow line here, which is the 100 day moving average, and that comes into play at 63.58. Uh, and even if you have a fairly sizable break below that, support could be found from this area here in around 62.32. And it's only really if you have a decent break below that, could then we be looking heading back towards the kind of psychologically important 6,000. But keep in mind, the, you know, the trend has been, up, uh, has been in a kind of solid upward trend for the last few months. So it's only really if you kind of uh, have a decent break below 6,000, could then you begin to question uh, the upper trend of the past few months. And now take a look at what's going on over in Germany. Fairly uh, similar situation there in Germany, whereby we've seen the DAX press higher for the last number of months. We, we're currently trading in the DAX uh, around 12,790, there thereabouts, just, just south of 12,000. Uh, just not, not too far away from 12,800. If you continue to press on higher from here on the DAX, the next big level to keep an eye for will be 13,000. Big psychological number. Something that markets will obviously be, traders will be, will be kind of uh, fixated on. So if you do see a bit of a pullback, where could we potentially find some support? We could see support come into play from this red line here, the 200 moving average, and that comes to play at 12,134. It's often that that metric, the trendy moving average, is often kind of used as a good barometer for is the market strong or is it weak. We're comfortably above it, so it's just that, that the markets are strong. But if we do see a pullback down towards that area, we could see a fresh buyers enter the fold. Even if you do take um, drop below it, that would necessarily kind of, kind of completely negate the recent bullish trend of the last few months. If you move below the 200 moving average, support could be found from the 100 day moving average. We can see here, this, which is this yellow line here, and we can see on a few occasions in late May and into early June, it acted nicely as support. And if a metric is acting as support in the past, it makes it likely that it'll act as support in the future, but there's obviously no guarantees. Uh, and that comes into play just south of 11,500. Uh, we talked about, mentions the U.S. markets uh, at the be beginning of this video, which I'll look at now. I'll have a look at the Dow Jones. We're obviously a few hours away from the cash trading situation over in New York, but it looks, that, looks like we're going to open up uh, on the cash when, once cash trading gets underway in, in New York. It looks like we're going to uh, open up at levels last seen in late February, so we're talking multi-month highs. That's a, you know, that's a clear indication of how, how kind of bullish and how strong sentiment is. So we're, current, we're expecting the Dow Jones to open up around 27,222, there thereabouts. If we press on higher from here, keep an eye on this, this line here in around 20, this line here, which comes to play at 28,164. Uh, if you do drift lower from here, support could be found from the 200 moving average, which comes into play at 26,351. And if you, if you have a decent break below that, we could find support from the water day moving average, similar to the next, in around 25,152, for the same reason that, you know, it didn't quite, it was, didn't act as perfect support, but we saw a bit of consolidation in around that region. Um, so once again, if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be important in the future. And now for the last uh, index I'll cover of today, I'll take a look at the S&P 500. Similar situation to the DAX, it's been a, uh, well, a similar situation to the FTSE, the DAX, the Dow jo and the Dow Jones. It's been pushing higher for the last number of months. The cash, once cash trading gets underway, we could we could be looking at setting uh, a new multi-month high. We could be looking at setting levels last seen in in late February. So sentiment is, is clearly strong. We're currently 
we're expecting the, the, the S&P 500 to open just south of 3,200. So if we, can, if we retake 3,200, we could then be looking towards head, heading towards 3,000. 210, 20, so on and so forth. And if you look to kind of build on those gains, the more like medium term target could be 3,300. Uh, if you do look to kind of drift lower from here, we could find some support coming from the lows of Friday in around kind of 3,108. And if you have a move below that, we could be like heading back towards the 200 moving average and that comes to play at 3015. You know, we can see here on a few occasions in late March, in late May rather, uh, that, that that particular level acted as uh, acted as support, so it's one to keep an eye out for. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the kind of common themes I want to just just mention here across the, the FTSE 100, the DAX, the Dow Jones, and the S&P 500, they've all been pressing higher, um, and they've all essentially either today or, or in the last few days have set multi-month highs. And why why, why I'm pointing that out is that. One of the tenets of Dow theory is that the averages must confirm each other, which essentially says markets that are similar to each other, you would expect those markets to be moving in a similar direction. And as we can see here, they're all moving in a nice upward trend. And on top of that, they've all been setting multi-month highs. So if you're trading one of those four indices, uh, you, you, you know it is worth your while keeping an eye on what the other ones are doing. Because if, for example, if you see that the FTSE 100 is an upward trend, it's fairly likely that the others will continue to be on that trend. And if and if they veer off, that could be a sign that that there is that we, we could see um, a change in the, the direction of the FTSE 100. Um, but also, if markets are all moving higher together, it makes it more likely that that kind of that, that particular trend, in this case, an upward trend, is going to continue. Now, what I'll do now is I'll move on to currencies. Look a look. Uh, take a look initially at euro dollar and then pound dollar. So, speaking of kind of common themes, we've seen some, we've seen some weakness in the U.S. dollar in the last couple of weeks. It's kind of rebounded it on Friday, which would explain this downward move on euro on euro dollar. But we can see here that the euro has been getting decent ground versus the, um, the the US dollar. We've managed to pull back a small bit uh, of the gains recently racked up, but the kind of upward trend of the last few weeks is still in play. Should we continue to press on higher from here on Euro dollar, we could look at targeting 114, and a move beyond 14 could take us up towards the highs of early March in around one spot, 14.95. If we do manage to drift a bit lower from here, because we're currently in around 112.86, we could find some support from this area here in around the kind of 112 zone. And it's only really if you have a decent break below that, could then we be looking heading back down towards this red line here, which is the 200 moving average, and that comes to play just north of 110, which in, in itself is a big uh, psychological number, a fairly big, uh, a fairly big metric to keep an eye out on for euro dollar. So taking a look now at pound dollar. Similar situation here, the kind of once again the common theme is a weakness in the US dollar. We've seen since about the middle of last month, we've seen a decent move to the upside in the pound versus the US dollar. We're trading there, they're about on the 200 day moving average. So this metric, and you can see here that this metric acted as resistance in late April and also in mid-April. So if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it likely that be important in the future. But once again, there are no guarantees. So if we can get back above the 200 moving average and we can build on those gains, we could then be looking up heading towards the kind of 130 area. That would be a fairly important metric to keep an eye out for on the uh, on the pound versus the US versus the US dollar. But if we managed it, but if it acts at resistance like it has previously done, and we looked at when it press on lower, we could be looking at heading it back towards this blue line here, the 50 moving average. We can see in a few occasions it acts as support. Uh, in the last few weeks, so keep an eye out on that, and that comes into play at one spot, 2387. And lastly, what I'll do is I'll take a look at Brink Crude Oil. I'll take a look at Brink Crude Oil, the August contract. So we, as I mentioned, um, production cuts have been extended in relation to OPEC, and the Saudis have upped their selling price as well. Uh, so you can see here, we've been in a nice upward trend, a series of higher highs and higher lows. 
on the uh, Brent crude August contract. In fact, today we hit levels last seen uh, in early March, so you know multi-month highs have been racked up, so, it's, so the upper trend is intact. And if you press on higher from here, uh, we could be looking at targeting this zone here in around $46 a barrel. Um, if we do have a bit of a pullback, support could be found from the $40 per barrel metric. You know, it's, it's an area, uh, it's a big, you know, fairly kind of big number as far as, um, as far as the oil market is concerned, and it's only really if you have a, have a major break below this, this line here, the 50-day moving average, and that comes into play at 33 spot 53. It's only really if you have a decent break below that, could then we begin to think, you know what, maybe the recent upward trend over the past few months has come to an end. Uh, I want you to want to thank you for tuning in today's videos. Uh, now that we have the technology thing. The technolo te technological issues sorted out on my end. Hopefully, we get back to the usual routine of having a, 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 a an outlook for the week uh, on month posted on Mondays or Tuesdays, and also thrown in for good measure on say Wednesday or Thursday an individual chart of the week. Uh, so stay safe, have a good trading week, and good luck.